no audio. <laughs> no audio's going this time. Take two. All righty. <laughs> take two, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Sandcast. I know it's take one for you. It's take two for us. We're putting in that work for you guys <laughs> behind the scenes. But uh, welcome back to the Sandcast. Stoked to be here. I'm Triborn. This is Travi. That's Savvy. Hey, that's a good one. And uh, we are back today. We don't have a guest because we have so much to talk about that we don't need a guest. We actually have a lot of fan questions. You guys, the fans, sent us questions, which were really good questions, by the way. Um, so we're really excited to talk about them today. Yeah, in this brand new studio with Tri's brand new neighbor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> welcome to the neighborhood, Thanks, Sav. guys. Yeah, I know. I was like wondering how long it's going to take me to get here. Two minute walk. Just didn't even like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to drive. I'm pretty lazy like that. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to walk because it's a block away. Exactly. Fired up to be here. I'm officially a um, member of Hermosa Beach. Yes. Um, ready to get after it. The commute is over. That was getting so good. too crazy two hour drive all so the time you, you think you're so fired much. up about walking to the podcast wait till you just get to walk to practice every <laughs> to the day. beach i know i'm like <laughs> i'm just gonna start asking people to practice right at like 21st street like right yep. there just straight ahead i know i was yeah. kind of bummed that my team went down to 27th yeah it's like i'm not a walker so like i still drive <laughs> i'll bike for sure it's a solid like two and a half minute bike yeah but i'm not walking like the whole like nine minutes that's what when it's i was practicing with tim because we were practicing at you're in jose's court yeah and i'm on fourth and so i walked every day okay that's and chase gnarly. budinger was like i will get you a bike <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, hurting me to walking. watch you walk <laughs> yeah. like i'm good i just put on a rogan podcast each one's like three hours so i got plenty of walking <laughs> right <today>. yeah so. <laughs> yeah no that's not I mean, me there are worse places to walk that was i was home in maryland for thanksgiving and uh that was like one of the toughest parts. It was like 30 degrees and I'd wake up and it was pretty windy. Right. So I was like, I can't, I'm not walking in this. Uh, and so now first thing I did when I got back here, I just walked like probably 10 miles and Delaney was like, and he's back. Yeah. Oh, that's why you parked so far away. We went surfing on uh, 27th street. He's like, all right, I'm on 15th. I was like, okay, well we're going to go out on 27th street. <laughs> and then his, well, I mean, we'll tell the story later, but his, his, let's just say his wetsuit was backwards and inside and out. Inside <laughs> out. Wet and wetsuit malfunction. The same time. <laughs> yeah, he tried. He put his wetsuit on three separate times to get it right. Anyway, <laughs> how can you tell me you're from Maryland without saying you're from Maryland? How was home, time. by the way? Was it yeah. awesome being home? I saw your oh, post about it. not being there for so long. Yeah, it was so fun. I moved to Florida in April 2014, and the longest I'd ever been home since I think was five days, um, and Jeez. so I was there for two weeks which was awesome yeah and it was cool because i got to go home a lot of, most of the time when i go home it's coming from here and so and i i don't like traveling east just because you you lose time yeah, in the day. exactly but i was actually coming exactly. from brazil so it was the first time i'd been to maryland going west mm -hmm. and so it was nice so i was on like a normal sleep schedule and got to hang out with my niece she's five months Aww. old so she's like able to kind of hang out and do things last time i saw her she was like two weeks and at that point, oh, yeah. like, they're just kind of blobs. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? sure. Everyone's like, oh, you got to meet my baby. I'm like, what? Well, does it do anything? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dance, puppet. <laughs> yeah. So it was nice being home. But as soon as I stepped off the plane, I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so nice here. Yep. It's easy. To, I don't know how it's so easy to forget how amazing California is. But it kind of gets easy to forget sometimes. My problem is I go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I come back, I'm like, this shithole. <laughs> God damn yeah. it. It's like looking out the window. It's all glassy in the yeah. sunset every night. Like, all right, I guess it's not, <laughs> it's not too bad. <laughs> I am such a spoiled piece of crap. <laughs> you, you've got a pretty good. It's awesome. I mean, you've like built it that way. Yeah. You know, yeah, you've earned Might it. Might as well. <laughs> you not? guys literally built this. Well, well, Gabby did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hang out it. <laughs> you make sure everything's up to code. Right, yeah. <laughs> did everyone stuff. else have good Thanksgivings? Amazing. Yeah, yeah just hung out with the fam. Um, nothing crazy. We had Thanksgiving at our house. And um, Thanksgiving, I think, is my favorite holiday, more than Christmas, which is maybe not the most popular opinion. But I, I'm just, I love food, and so yeah. I just go nuts. I actually tried this diet for a little bit it was terrible i don't recommend it. it's called whole 30 and okay. i was doing it before thanksgiving and i was supposed to continue it after thanksgiving <laughs> and then i had thanksgiving food i was like nope i'm not going back <laughs> i just wanted to try some out my friends yeah. were doing it and it, it's like you can't eat 
carbs, dairy, no alcohol. No, I was like, I'm miserable. That's my whole <sighs> diet no just diet. removed. <laughs> and then we had Thanksgiving. I cheated the night before Thanksgiving because we had the whole family there on Thanksgiving. I'm like, absolutely cheat day. Right. Day after had leftovers, and then I just right. never recovered. I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going back. But uh, yeah, I love Thanksgiving. Food is always amazing. Um, fam was great. We had a little COVID scare, um, but we're all everyone's fine. Everyone's healthy. So it was nice. How was yours? It was good, same old. We do Thanksgiving up here, Christmas back home, so it's okay. all Gabby's family mm-hmm. up in the valley. Um, we did it in the driveway this year because they, they, in one par- portion of the valley up there, they turned all the power off for the I whole day of Thanksgiving. That. Yeah, because oh, there's the wind? Santa Ana winds mm-hmm. coming and that tends to create fires. But like, we just. Like precautionary, turned off the power to half the people, like <laughs> thousands of people on Thanksgiving. <laughs> so we had to audible and go to Gabby's grandmother's house and like set up in the driveway, which was Wild. still great. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, kind of interesting driveway um, Thanksgiving. Pepperdine, with twenty-five people on a table. Yeah, that's <laughs> nuts. Oh yeah, gosh. it ended, probably ended up being kind of fun. Yeah, it was kind of yeah, sweet. Yeah. Um, but Pepperdine gets crushed by those Santa Anas. Oh yeah, and um, and they just built. Did you ever play at their courts yes, on campus? Yes, once this past year. So yeah. they, they just built these brand new courts on campus. Um, and the first time they built them, they didn't have a tarp. Santa Ana's came in and blew all the sand away. Oh, jeez. Because it's up, it's up like high in, yeah. on the campus, like up in the hills over yeah. there. And so this time they put the tarp on. But the Santa Ana's came through, ripped the tarp off, ripped down a shed, sent oh, like shit. all the equipment just like scattering down campus because it's on, on top of a hill. So everything just funneled down the hill and all the sand's gone again. Oh, God. So they're my. back to practicing. And they need to build gosh. a wall. I know. That's what they need to do. Yeah. So those winds are serious. Yeah. Good <laughs> for surfing, gnarly. though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I thought about. <laughs> <laughs> Off-season surfing season. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. we got to get the whole crew out there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well. Should we dive in? Shall yeah, we? we got plenty of fan questions to get plenty. to. Should we start with... Does it, Travis even made categories for this one. Yeah. There's so many questions. I'm trying to make it as easy for well, you to Well, you do your I mean, you do a great job. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. But um, shall we start with partnerships? Should yeah, we get into let's it? Do it? That's the biggest one. I'm actually topic. really curious. Biggest one. Yeah. I mean, let's see. there's a, quite a few. Um, let's see. Donnie Bass, new team for the 2022 season. Any, any updates? Do we have any information since the last time we talked about this? I haven't heard anything for sure that we could actually talk about. I know. Um, everyone, anyone who's actually like, <laughs> making a partner move is like, but you can't tell anyone. <laughs> right. That's always a caveat when anyone tells me anything. I heard a crazy one today and that I can't say. Right. It's so, <laughs> <laughs> it's so frustrating. So I hope that helps uh, all you fans out there who yeah. really want to know stuff. So I haven't heard anything that <laughs> we can say. Try same thing. Yeah, I heard um, a big one today. Me too. It's probably the same one. Maybe. But um sorry fans. We're just, yeah. just I have no teasing I have you. no idea. I'm like, what? You have any questions? Yeah, we're not answering. <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> yeah. What a lot of the questions about partnerships though were about Sav. Yeah. Um, Savvy, the Laguna Open champ with hey, Jess Gaffney was one. So fun. I'm on good, that one. That was a great Back tournament. Back in the day, me and Will you Montgomery. Oh wow. Yes. That was a fun nice. one. It was oh, so yeah. fun. Yeah. So, I never played there. Because I know there were a couple asking about either we are you playing with Tony Rodriguez mm-hmm. or are you playing with Jess Gaffney? I mean yeah, I don't – I'm an open book. Like, I'll tell anyone, like, what's going on. So I have no issue saying, like, yeah, I love playing with Jess. I love playing with Tony. Um, I had a great summer playing with Maycraft and Abby from school, but they're both in college still, so that's kind of a tricky one. Yeah. Um, and so I'm trying to navigate, you know, what's the smartest thing to do. Like, me and Tony get along great, and we went to um, Clearwater and had a great tournament. Me and Jess had a great tournament. But, you know, Tony doesn't have points and neither do I. So I'm like, how important with this new FIVB system, which I still don't know very much about, you know, could we even go with no points and go play? Um, I got a few points this summer on the AVP. So, you know, I'm, I just, I'm like open to whatever, honestly. And like, I have a great time with Tony, so I would love to play with her. Um, But I, like again, it's the same with her. Like she's a she's a blocker, so she's like a hot commodity. Like yeah. people are asking her to train and stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm getting jealous. I feel like we're in a relationship. I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love her. She moved out here from Louisiana. So she's living in Torrance. Um, and I think the best part about her is that 
we just get along so well off the court. And so, and that's like, for me at least, I have a hard time getting comfortable with my partner and playing mm. comfortable and playing myself if I don't really get along with them off the court. I just yeah. don't, if it's, if it's like tense and I know that's a part of the sport, um, you know, I might, there's going to be a time where I'm sure I'm going to play with someone who's much older than me or just totally different than me. Right. Um, and I'm super flexible and willing to compromise with that, obviously. Um, I'll block, I'll play right, left, I don't care. Um, but it just makes it way more fun to travel with someone that you get along with so well. Sure. So we're, we'll train now that I'm up here officially. Um, I don't have to say no to training anymore because I'm in San Diego. I can say yes to whoever, whenever, and, you know, go get touches with, you know, maybe some of these girls with points who are still looking for a younger defender. I don't, you know, I don't really know what's, hint, hint. what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone? No, but, um, you know, we'll see. It's, I, I think that's kind of how it is with most people. It's, it's so up in the air. Yeah. So. I'm excited for the opportunities. I'm excited, you know, to train with Tony a bit um, and kind of just see where it goes. Hopefully a bigger season for me to go get some experience. I need sponsors because it's expensive to live here. That's, hint, you know, hint, hint. hint. Yeah. <laughs> Always. I'm throwing, I'm throwing it out there. I do that all the um, time. <laughs> yeah. No, no complaints. Everything's yeah. good. Yeah. So a lot of people ask about Tony. I love Tony. Um, and now that I'm up here, it's just I'm going to try and get into the USA facility and get lifting in because that's been something I haven't done. Have they offered of, that or how's it working? So beginning? I've talked to Christian yeah. and now he's gone. So I was yeah. like, oh, that sucks. Um, and then I did that collegiate um, USA camp this summer with like Taryn and Kristen and everyone. And they, you know, Gabby kind of ran that and she was like, if you need help at all, let me know. So I've been in contact with her, but I haven't really, you know, said too much. because I wanted to just get up here, get settled. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, you know, planted the seed of it. And um, she yeah, said you she thinks get it's fine. There. Exactly. Sean yeah. Scott's the guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll get after it. I'm finally, yeah. I just gotta, I gotta get my bed in my, I don't even have my bed in there. <laughs> like, I gotta spend one night here and then I can commit to all these trainings and stuff. But, You're gonna be sleeping yeah. on the studio couch. Per- yeah. <laughs> it's curled up right here. It's perfect. Oh man. Anyways, yeah, enough about me though. I, I don't like talking about myself. <laughs> the people First. needed to know. People need to know. They wanted to know. They were curious. Um, yeah, and people, it, people And it's curious. hard for anyone to make any partnership moves like everyone's so curious about it but the fivb schedule still isn't fully out and the avp we still have no idea no clue. what the schedule is going to look like we don't know even avp next gold so it, it's impossible for people to make moves when they don't know what there is to play mm-hmm. because points like you said are such a big thing yeah because if you're gonna have a partner partner and you want to do international well then it, you couldn't really play with a tony because you guys you wouldn't be able to get in events unless exactly. like a Norseka schedule comes Exactly. Out. But there's yeah. no Norsekas. Yeah. I feel like this um, this year is a lot different than the last first year of the quads that I've experienced before. Usually it's kind of like a partner free, or not just just after a season. Like yeah. it's usually like a partner free for all. Obviously Olympic years, there's not that much shakeup. Mm-hmm. I would have thought there was a lot this year, but I haven't really heard anything. Everyone's kind of like, holding their places at the moment, not making many commitments. Yeah. The new tours, new AVP, new FIVB, um, a lot of retirements, like yeah. especially on the men's side. Um, there's other shakeups on the women's side. Um, so I think everyone's kind of in this like waiting to make move. maybe like at the end of the year, yeah. like right before, it's just going to be a ton of shakeups. But it's, it's kind of a, a weird, unique situation right now. Yeah. Like different is. than a, any other year. It's interesting because I feel like that's <coughs> just for the U.S. though. Because I feel like every other country has just totally like blown up and rearranged yeah. itself. They're just like, oh, this team's breaking up and they're playing with them. Yeah. That's it. And dude, I heard the craziest freaking thing about, uh, I heard Semenov's done in oh, Russia. Okay. I keep hearing that. Like, um, <laughs> But which was wild when I was in Brazil. It was I'm kind of like sad because I love him. Uh, <laughs> you guys are fun with us. matches, <laughs> yeah. Especially because we won. But you know, <laughs> yeah. Throw that but out like there. Brazil's like totally, <laughs> completely reordered, and they didn't waste any time. No, like yeah. As soon as Tokyo ended, it was just like. I feel like Brazil, the federation's doing it. That's why, like, they're like in a board meeting. Like, he's playing with mm-hmm. him. He's yeah. playing with him. He's retiring. Yeah. <laughs> you either retire or you play with this 12 year old <laughs> something like that yeah Netherlands too is kind of like they don't have that many options but like yeah they're very like the program is run by the coaches yeah the men's side is starting to get pretty big like kind of deep in the Netherlands yeah that new um, what's his name Borman's and De Groot De Groot they won I am uh, De Groot yeah because they won uh, Stad. <laughs> And then they got second in European champs and should have beat 
Anders and Christian. They're up 12-8 in the third. Yeah, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Probably um, more so the Groot, I would guess. But I haven't watched enough to, to discredit Borman. Borman? Borman's, yeah. Yeah, he's but good. DeGroote, when I was watching, I was like, yeah, this guy's got... He's legit, this guy's got and he's something. super young. He um, And they they just got uh, Rinder Numidor as their coach. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. He's he's epic. Just legend. I think five-time Olympian. Really? Yeah. Oof. He was oh like the gosh. OG like Dutch guy. Him and uh, Schul. Dude, he... Um, <laughs> I played against him his last few years, and he's like... You can just tell he's on another level mentally. He, he was like one of the guys that was like a part kind of a part of that like Raji era yeah and you could tell he just kind of like mentally got it yeah and he like we, me and Hayden played so well against him and Varenhorst they beat us 24-22 two sets in a row mm-hmm. in the quarterfinals that was world champs world champs in their home stadium and it was like he just wouldn't let a ball drop yeah I was like this mother yeah <laughs> and for good reason he's a baller he's really good yeah yeah, so the rest of the world is kind of rearranging. But uh, the U.S., I feel like on the men's side, everyone's still just waiting to see if Taylor confirms with Taylor. Taylor Crabb is with Taylor Sander. Yeah, no, I mean, that's happening. But that's it seems not, like it's, it's... They already played together. It's legit, yeah. Unless Sander somehow needed to leave and go take a contract. Yeah. That would be the only reason, I think. Yeah, because then after that, I mean, it's like, what does Nick Lucena and Chase Budinger do? Yeah, I think Lucena's the one right now, assuming that... I mean, Lucena, Budinger, and um, Troy Andy. Why am I blanking on Andy? Oh, Andy um, Benish. Benish. Um, I think those are the two best options for him. And if I'm either of those guys, I, I go with Nick. Yeah. I don't know if they think the same thing, but that's for sure. Because yeah. Nick's still balling. He's in good He's shape. He's still so good. And people, I think, uh, underestimate how good he was because he was with Phil. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, he was with Phil, whatever. Like, <laughs> right. No, you should have seen Nick playing with Ryan Doherty back in the day and Theo and, like, how much he was carrying. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, so maybe we'll just wait on Nick Lucena yeah. for the men's side. I feel like have that's, to wait like, people. the women's, too. It, you start, like, once the top is kind of figured out and then, like, it'll start to kind of fall just, into place. That's true. Trickle. But I feel like with us, too, it's like, is Kerry going to play? I don't know. Like, it, like what are... Kelly and Sarah, Sponsel and Sarah, he like all these people. Stockman and Larson. Exactly. Like, I, I don't Z- think, who's Zana going to go? I don't like, think all these people. one partnership on the women's side is set. Like, which one? Taryn and Kristen. Taryn and Kristen. Okay, That's, there you go. April and Alex? Maybe. I guess. I don't know. Maybe. It's hard to say because, like, Alex was so banged up for so long. And they're like, does she try to go for another quad? Like, no one said mm. when, when Try and Geeter had April and Alex. Or give her body on. a break, maybe, or <laughs> yeah. something. Yeah. When Try had them on, they said we're we're planning on playing together. I don't yeah. see um yeah, I don't see um, Alex just doesn't have the same motor as April. Like if mm-hmm. Alex tried to put her body through what April puts her body through, I don't think she would last. So she has to like think differently Be strategically, smart. and April's on a different level. She like, is. She's on yeah. the like how the goats think. Yeah, kind of. There's thing. a reason she's, she's in the gym. Three time medalist. Right. Like I just came from the gym and she's there I'm like why the hell is she here <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be like in here when no one else was like damn it <laughs> it's like those Kobe stories you hear where you're like oh, I'm gonna show up extra I'm gonna beat today. him and then he's like sweating <laughs> and already finished practice you're yeah. like god damn it <laughs> yeah anyway oh, alright that was a long answer yeah. for that one no but I mean th- there's a couple it's you know some people said predict the top five teams and new teams so I think to answer the question we don't we don't know the answer to the question yeah I guess. yeah right all the partnerships and, are so And interesting. I think that we won't know until a schedule comes out, yeah. realistically. What about you guys, though? Any information to disclose? Not to really. I mean, well, I'm playing with Trev. Playing Trev. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then for me, I look at, like, partnerships sort of like you'd look at, uh, like, applying for colleges. Like you have your reach <laughs> schools, right? Then you have your target schools, and you have your safety schools. And <laughs> That's a good way to put it. And so, like, obviously, like, if Don't say who's your safety schools are <laughs> yeah. on, on the podcast. Yeah. Come on. So if like uh, like a Nick Lucena is, is like he would be like a reach school. Yeah. He's like, hey, like you played a lot of international stuff. You still have points. I still want to play internationally. Chase is doing this with Troy. You're the next blocker up. Be like, okay, awesome. Like no brainer. Yeah. Um, and then you'd have like the guys who are 
in your range that I've been playing with like for the last couple of years. And that could be any one of like 20 guys at this point. Um, I know. Someone asked about Timmy Brewster. Timmy I Brewster, 2022. Tim Brewster. Literally the best person ever. <laughs> yeah. He's the best person ever. And like that kid works so freaking yeah. hard. Yeah, I does. was so stoked for him when we won, when we beat um, Billy and Andy. Because like Tim, like you've seen how hard Tim works. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's sure. been working with Jose since he's like 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Never skips a day. He, like, when we were on the road, he was stretching for two hours a night. <laughs> yeah. Before bed, two hours. Yeah, two hours. On, these are on like wood floors. Tim's too. the kind of guy where like if I'm mentoring him, I'm like, okay, you're so good at all the intangibles. We need to get you good at the like relaxing, you know, the the other part of it. Like, yeah, you're so far in the section of like doing everything perfectly that yeah, we need to get you like to this other side where like you're just winging it. Sometimes there's no plan. You know, you're not like extra prepared. You're not worried that you didn't prepare. Enough, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like that kind of guy. Yeah. He um, we're like our personalities couldn't be any more different because he's like super type A and really mm-hmm. organized. Right. And I'm, me and you are kind of similar in that we're just like let's see what happens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go. We'll figure it, it out. Is what it is. Yeah. Um, but I was so excited. Mo- honestly, mostly for him when we beat Billy and Andy because like he hasn't had that win yet. Yeah. Like a good signature win. Like he hasn't made an AVP validation draw. win. Yeah. He yeah. hasn't had one where it's like Tim's proven that he can beat people. Yeah. Um, and, and he's so, he's so good. Out. He's so he's good. Amazing. Too. Just, yeah. Yeah. And he was like incredible in our match in Brazil. I mean, he went dig for dig with honestly one of the best defenders I've ever played against. This guy from Ukraine named Popov, who's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's the only reason that we went to three. Like, Tim just dug everything. Yeah. He was awesome. Yeah. And so, like, if I don't get, like, one of the quote-unquote reach schools, like, absolutely, like, Tim would be my guy. Oh, nice. Yeah. And well, he yeah. was like, and he, we moved him to the left the day before we played Billy and Andy. Mm-hmm. We are like, let's just see. Let's just try it out with me on the right. Because um, we were thinking that people would probably start serving Tim. Mm-hmm. And I'm a bit, like a little bit better of an optioner because I did it like all year with Adam basically. Mm-hmm. And so Andy and Billy served Tim the first three balls. I optioned the first three and then they served me every single <laughs> ball the rest of the match. I was like, oh, that worked. <laughs> <laughs> that works out. Depending on what you want. Yeah. And so he was he was like great on the left, switch sides. Like he was really flexible. Like, And there's, I always like playing with partners where you know that their half of the team is taken care of. Right. And yeah, Tim is. Sure. <laughs> A hundred million percent yep. taken care yep. of. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah, you got it dialed in. Oh yeah. How was Brazil, by the way? Awesome. Yeah, I love Brazil. Yeah. It was hard to get to, um, but once you get there, everything is so cheap. Um, it's really similar to California. I thought the vibe, like they have this cool little strand that you can yeah. walk down with mm-hmm. all these shops and stuff. The beach was beautiful. Yeah. The weather was great. And it was really fun because I've been learning Portuguese for the past like year, and so it was really fun to actually yeah. like, speak a little Portuguese it. in Brazil exactly. and use it. And the food was amazing. Yeah. So I I was a huge fan of Brazil. Yeah. Sick. Did yeah. you um, did you get to watch Taylor Sander and Taylor Crab play at all? Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of yeah. questions on the like on your category overall beach questions. <laughs> we're di- we're diving in. Um, so a couple people asked like what you thought or what we thought of Taylor Sander's performance um in Brazil. Like, how did it compare to your expectations, or what did you expect based on how he did? Um, I expected, v- like, very little. Because, um, hmm. like, he'd only – I mean, he just had a kid. Yeah. He, he can't. He left indoor from the Olympics after a full season. Mm-hmm. Like, body was beat to shit. Yeah. Didn't really have any time to practice with Taylor. Like, they were in Utah for, like, a week. Granted, if you went – if you saw their practices, Jake and Taylor's practices for the last two months, or, yeah. like, post-Olympics – Jake's on the sideline the whole time, and Sanders <laughs> is in there. Okay. Jake took minimal reps. Okay. But yeah, um, no, still a very limited reps. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I hadn't seen him, and so, but I have seen a lot of indoor players start to make the transition, and the first few months, if not first few years, are usually pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but Taylor like far exceeded expectations. Yeah. I mean, you could tell like he, his passing was just about perfect. He was borderline unservable. Um, I mean, and when we had Lambo on the podcast, it made me think about that because Lambo was the AVP Offensive Player of the Year his first year uh, out of indoor. Right. And I, when we asked him about it, he goes, "Well, I'm used to hitting against three blocks. Right. I go against one. It's like I can do whatever exactly. I want. Right. And I actually thought about that watching Taylor. I was like, he's just he can do whatever he wants. Um, 
And so everyone just started serving Taylor Crab. And he that was probably the rustiest I've ever seen Taylor look. Taylor Crab look. We're gonna need this. Yeah, we're not gonna use the fish. names Taylor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um and like Taylor Sander, like he's not as good of a setter as Jake, particularly in transition, mm-hmm. which is totally Jake's understandable. Jake's probably the best transition setter. Yeah. Jake and Phil. And 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 he had a couple of things like he wasn't ready to cover almost ever, which if you think about it in indoor he probably wasn't used to reco- covering yeah, a ton sure. mm-hmm. and short line shots over him that in indoor you're taught basically not to turn and get so you don't mm-hmm. run into someone yeah. he didn't turn and get on the beach so just small things that he'll figure out but I mean they got a ninth in a four star even if it's a watered down four star it's still a freaking nine exactly and they beat a decent young Danish team that upset Evandro and Alvaro so I mean they had one good win I will say that they weren't competitive against the teams that they lost to. Mm. Like Evandro or Andre and George smashed them, and Allison and Guto kind of had their way with them too. Um, but it, Taylor's serve is ridiculous, absolute game changer. His passing is just about perfect. Yeah. It's just blocking, setting, and like little beach nuances that will be cleaned up in pretty much no time for such a good athlete. So he's good as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. I, I watched. Um, two matches i think the brazil matches and they got smashed but it didn't look like he was just like out of sorts and didn't know what he was doing like he he had some bailout shots and like made the right decisions a lot of times you could tell his instincts are in the right place mm-hmm. um but yeah i mean chemistry just like not knowing being out there not knowing taylor's sets and what you do the, the whole feel of it i mean he's gonna be good yeah yeah i, I think it'll be Really fun for the fans to watch. Yeah. Because you'll Yahtzee some balls every once in a while with that crazy arm of his. His arm is It's nuts. so weird. I haven't seen an arm like that. Yeah. Like, it comes from the side. And it's like a full, like, side swing bounce. I don't know. You guys got to watch. No, the I saw like, the on Instagram, the, like, the McKibben, bro- like, the four-man. Yeah, the McKibben, guys, where well, they slow down. He, like, swung. He was looking this way, and he hit from over here. I was like, yeah. that's like the high. most insane. Yeah, He's it's like way up here. reaching and doing that. And it's still got pace on yeah. it. Like for me, like I do that, but it's like a it's like almost a like a drop yeah. shot yeah. chop. Yeah. yeah. And he's like yachting it from there. And it's fully cross body. So if you step all the way into it, like he's fully facing the line. Yeah. He yeah. can definitely hit that one too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's gonna yachtsy some balls for yeah. sure. The one thought I had was that I think that he probably has a much higher ceiling as a defender. Yeah. Because I mean he's about six three, I was six gonna say four. How tall he, yeah. So he's not all that tall. Um, but is his block bigger than mine? I think. So. I think it will be. I don't know. You have a pretty damn big block. I, mean, I would say when I saw him in the four man, his his chin's up there. Yeah, but, but best can, blocker I mean, is different than big block. I'm just saying size okay. wise. Yeah. He definitely has an indoor style blocking. Like yeah. When I watch mm-hmm. him, like he's you know. Sometimes head down, he's yeah. straight over, making yeah. moves like that, yeah. um, which comes with pra- right. practice and stuff. He's got Rich coaching him, who's been coaching Jake this whole time. So yeah. he knows Jake's hand placement, which is probably the best, or one of the best. Um, so he's going to learn that. Yeah. But when I saw him in the format, I was like, okay, he's getting up at least as high. He was getting up as high as me, let's say. Yeah. But I have beach legs. Yeah. And, like, when I came out, I was getting, like, maybe my eyes up there. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. I'm, like, getting up there. Right. So once he gets his beach legs, that, like, he's a freak. Like, you got to oh, understand yeah. he's the he's guy insane. that uh, in the world of volleyball, the entire world, like, it's, like, who's the big leaper? Who's the freak jumper? It's Taylor Sanders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we haven't seen that yet on the beach. Yeah. But I think it's coming. Yeah. I think it, if anything – He's going to be one of the most entertaining players to watch. Like, yeah, because he's, be s- he's also like athletic and scrappy, mm-hmm. and he's playing with the most athletic yeah. and scrappy right. defender. Yeah. So like, it's going to be really hard to get a ball down yeah. to the ground, and it'll be fun to watch. It's so exciting. Yeah. yeah, so I was impressed. Yeah. Long story yeah. short. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, I kind of want to talk about, someone mentioned here, um, talk about the AVP Uncovered documentary and the impact of content on growth of the AVP. What, have you guys seen any of that, really? It seems super cool. Zana posted something. I was like, this is so cool. Yeah, I saw, like the uh, coolest hype video ever. I was with Zana when they were filming a bit. Yeah. So I was like in the background. Yeah. Yeah. And it seemed like cool. They showed me like a few clips. Um, 
I think it's a great call. Yeah. It's kind of like a Drive to Survive series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they can't go in quite as in depth as Drive to Survive, but it's along the lines of something that we should absolutely do. I don't think AVP funded it, right? No, it's uh, it was self funded. Yeah. Um, this guy named I don't know who actually did the funding. Uh-huh. This guy named uh, Mark Bucknam. I think he's based out of Tennessee. He was kind of one of the guys like yeah, heading yeah. the project. Um, so it's it Zana and Jake. It's and Zana Kristen and, and Kristen Terry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Originally, James Shaw was on the list, but then he got hurt like right before the season was supposed to get started. Mm-hmm. Huh. Um, but I think it's it's brilliant because, like you mentioned. The Drive to Survive series has put Formula One. It's, I mean, I, I don't know what the viewership would be, but I feel like F one is just like exponentially increased since yeah, that series. I think it naturally has. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's a great series. It's awesome. My the thing that sells me on it is, I'm not a Formula One fan. I watch it, and I'm a Formula One. Fan. Yeah, yeah. That's what we need. Mm-hmm. Like people that aren't fans to come in and be fans, because they're understand. They're now understanding ins and outs of the mm-hmm. sport and whatnot yeah so i don't know we'll see i, I haven't seen um enough to know exactly what their direction yeah. is or if it's like more behind the scenes but sounds cool i know mm-hmm. that when i was talking to him in atlanta he was saying that pretty much they're basing it they're modeling off of drive to survive oh they are okay with just way scaled down resources right of course but it's also a way scaled down sport so we don't quite need That's as true. many yeah because i think drive to survive they have like 50 cameras going on yeah oh, it's just yeah. it's crazy yeah, the production value. Yeah. but next summer I, I feel like just like the overall content just keeps exponentially increasing because mm-hmm. when we started this podcast is like just us then the McKibben started doing their videos and that was really kind of it and then now you got like like all the players are starting to become like pretty good at content creation mm-hmm. has anyone started anything like similar like a YouTube or I mean obviously like Casey has a YouTube. Right. And, uh, you look at like a, a, a James Shaw and Molly Turner. They have their little like uh, YouTube. Oh, their kind travel of stuff. Outdoor yeah. vlog series, okay. um, which isn't quite beach, but they sort of tie everything together. Right. Like mm-hmm. more of a lifestyle thing. Interesting. I don't know. I just feel like it's an entrepreneurial sport. Yeah. You kind of have to figure out it out. Out of system guys are doing a good job. Yeah. And it's more indoor oriented, but kind yeah. of a hybrid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So next summer, it'll be fun. Um, they're still looking for a distributor because when like they have the products and now they're sort of shopping it out to see who wants like what platform to put mm-hmm, it on, mm-hmm. um, and then that'll come out the same time the beach volleyball movie comes out. So next summer will be a big one. Oh yeah, your movie. <laughs> yeah. That's right. How exciting is like, that? Wait, wait, I was what like, what beach volleyball what movie? <laughs> That's so cool. Sick. Oh my gosh. So, Next summer will be a fun one. I know. Well, and there's some questions here about like just any word on AVP schedule or anything with Bally's or anything like that that you guys have heard of that. Um, I did hear stuff. (laughs) Once again, I don't know (laughs) what I'm allowed to say, Um, but it's uh, it looks good. Yeah, definitely more events. Yeah, and obviously it's not official or else it'd be announced. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, significantly more events. And um, all over the country, including the same events that we've already gone to. I don't know. What else can I say? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard anything. Just that we'll have more, which at this point, we're not going to have less. I think eight, eight <laughs> exactly. was the goal. Eight was kind of like, okay. let's at least get to eight. Yeah. And yeah. who knows? What That's a good number. It's, yeah. It's going to be solid. I mean, it's, it's two like, more than we've had in the last two years. Yeah, like line. six is too little. Seven's like manageable. Eight is like, okay, we're okay with it. Obviously, we'd like 10, 12, mm-hmm. but like we're good with eight. Yeah. yeah. Plus, you're on the world tour and it's a, it's, it'll be, be a lot. Yeah. yeah. Be grind. Yeah. Um, Scott Perkins asked any opinion on AVP matches being put on betting websites like FanDuel or Barstool? Oh, load them up. Let's gamble. Wait, say Let's it again. Wait. <laughs> Just your opinion on our like AVP matches being put on betting websites like FanDuel oh, or Barstool? Yeah, let's go. For sure. <laughs> I'm all about it. Um, I heard that it's not, I don't even think it's going to be available this year yet. Like, they oh. just haven't put it in place. And that's not facts either. But I think getting the gambling and all that in place is a huge process that no one really, it's not just like, okay, everything's the same and then we just bet on it now. <laughs> no, because they have to put all the con- 
players under contract. They have to, all the re uh, scorekeepers, refs have to be under contract because now we're dealing with money. Throwing matches and stuff. And like real legal issues. <laughs> yeah. And then um, they have to bring in a third party organization to do all the statistics. And, you know, so there's going to be like, there has to be more people watching every match, doing the statistics, making sure everything's fair. Yeah. And so it's a it's big a deal. Thing, and I don't process. think that it's fully ready yet. Yeah. Like Bally's is kind of slow rolling their whole uh, sports platform out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I am so stoked for gambling to happen. Like over, I think we should absolutely. <laughs> yeah. When I was home, me and my brothers, we bet on like every college basketball game. <laughs> yep. So we're sitting here and we're watching the Colgate Harvard basketball game. We're like, come on, Colgate! <laughs> <laughs> Betting ten bucks on a game changes everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna get some degenerates in Maryland betting on beach volleyball and like, come on, savvy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. I think it'd be so fun. <laughs> totally, I would, I would love it. Um, okay, now we're, we're switching up here. Talk about some off-season training, nutrition, and stuff. So a couple of people asked, what um, does off-season training look like for you guys? Obviously, we're both getting on the Whole30 diet. <laughs> I just don't <laughs> recommend. I don't <laughs> recommend that at all. No. What does yours look like? <clears throat> off-season training. So I kind of... Uh, it's just a lot of – it just depends on how much time you have off. This year we had a pretty good chunk off. Mm -hmm. What, October, November, December, January, yeah, February, I mean, February, almost four or five months yeah, like total. Well, Mid-March mid is the first uh, international tournament. That's really far away. Rio, I think. Yeah, so for me it was like, okay, first month or two, it's about the body. Like, let's rehab the body. Mm -hmm figure out all the things that are hurting, get them back. And um, normally it's like rest. Like when I was younger, it was rest and go in for treatment. This time I kind of gave my trainer full, uh, I just gave him the body. I was like, here, what do you want, what do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he just started kicking my ass right away. And he's like, I'm like, the best way I can rehab you isn't to rehab you, it's to get you stronger. Um, joints and tendons and whatnot, um, they respond to load. They heal better with load rather than treatment and stuff, which I just learned. And I had some tendonitis, knee, shoulder, whatever, uh, ankles. So we're just kind of going for it. Only like twice a week to start and then we're ramping up to three times a week. Um, but I mean, I'm not gonna get to season and be like, damn it, I've been lifting and like, you know, getting my body stronger for three months. Yeah. Like that's not gonna be a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and also my trainer's always like, yeah, your schedule starts in March. Yeah, right. That's what they always <laughs> say. And then you come to me in February and say, hey, I got to play in three weeks. And he's always pissed about it. So he's <laughs> like, I'm getting you ready in right December. Yep. Um, but that's kind of our strategy. And I like it. I, I, I want to, I don't want to feel like the off season is like, okay, I don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, I just, I'm just going to go back to work. I personally started doing, um, it's just film study, um, uh, what else is oh I just I already started meeting with my sports psych um, I'm just doing kind of personal stuff outside mm -hmm. of the, the team what else is there obviously nutrition and whatnot which goes out the window for Thanksgiving and holidays is a little Absolutely. tricky but generally just taking care of the body mm -hmm. getting back to work um, there's another piece of the puzzle there that I'm <laughs> missing but I'm doing everything except for volleyball. Like, yeah. just start learning and getting better again. Mm -hmm. And so by the time season comes around, it's we're better off than we were yeah. when we ended season. Absolutely. Do you touch ball at all? Or are you just, like, totally off no. till? I mean, I, you know, McKibben, Fort, when stuff like that comes yeah. up, yeah. Uh, USC four-man legends tournament, mm -hmm. me and Megan Craft. Held it down. Mm -hmm. Took the W. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that. I set, too. Um, stuff like that. Like, you know, I've always said I want to play more fun ones. I played yeah. in Myrtle this year. Yeah, yeah. I had to pull out a nags head because my ankle. I played in Austin. played in the USC four-man. Yes, I'm doing Getting it, all the Trav. fun stuff. Yeah. I'm doing it. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, yeah, have fun with it. But no, I'm not touching the ball. But I am getting a little antsy. I'm kind of letting my body tell me, like, when I get antsy, like, I want to, like, get better. Yeah. I can tell, like, I need to give myself a little, mm -hmm. like, so maybe, like, mid December I'll get out there more by myself do some calibration reps yeah and then um, Jan 1st we'll probably start hitting it as a team yeah but yeah I'm, I'm going hard 
like body responds better when you're strong when you're strong your muscles are protecting all those weak areas yeah so then they can actually rest and heal mm-hmm. kind of sounds backwards yeah right like to strengthen my knee I'm not going to do like heavy squats right but if you strengthen all the muscles around your knee and that then there's less load on that tendon right mm-hmm. whereas if you're like atrophied and you've just been breaking yourself down all year now more of that load's going on that more tendon mm-hmm. yep. and then yeah the doctor was literally explaining like load helps tendons yeah so like holds like isometric holds and stuff jumping will hurt it will irritate it yeah but doing holds, just like wall squats or stuff like that, Interesting. that will actually heal it. That's mm-hmm. like my whole <coughs> weightlifting program right now for the next six weeks is all like isometric mm-hmm. holds. It's so like front squats, five sets of five with five second holds at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Back squat, same thing. RDLs, trap bar, like everything mm-hmm. you're just like holding. So that's my big thing is I'm, I'm not touching a ball. Yeah. For, and I have like, usually I start getting antsy if I go like two days without you touching like, the ball. Yeah, you but play now, all like, the time. Yeah, yeah. but now I'm, I was talking to Delaney the other day. We were walking down the strand and I was like, I feel no urge whatsoever to go out by that net and you know do what, anything. You know what that means? <laughs> you had your first full year on the world tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome. <laughs> I was like, is this bad? Is something wrong? She's like, no, <laughs> don't play. <Yeah. laughs> just take a break. <laughs> so I'm just lifting. I'm lifting four days a week. A program I got from uh, Christian mm-hmm. Hartford, who left us for Oregon. Um, so one beautiful place to the next. Um, and then just trying to put weight back on. Mm-hmm. So I started the season at 207. When I left for Chicago, I was 183. Holy Jesus. Yeah. I lost a lot of weight. Why do you think? I, it's, I eat, like, during season, dude, like, the amount of food I eat is obscene. And, like, when you're on the, like, world tour, you can't eat, you just you can't, can't eat, eat all that much. Yeah. Especially with COVID, and we, we like, weren't allowed to get outside yeah. the bubbles a lot of times, and you were just sort of limited to either, like, what they had on, in these select hours. And so I just, like, wasn't eating enough food. Hmm. Um, and I think just, like, the stress of traveling and stress, competing yeah. all the time it adds up yeah um that's a good thing to note yeah because like i mean i'm on my what like eighth seventh year on the mm-hmm. world tour or whatever my weight fluctuated like four pounds this year yeah. which is like I, i've fluctuated before but right. like for some reason this year like i stayed right 200 mm-hmm. 203 98 maybe yeah but like yeah and I, I haven't been that light since i was like a junior in college I thought that I get a little lighter and I'd be faster and whatnot, but I kind of feel opposite. Like I feel stronger, and I when I'm stronger, I feel faster mm-hmm. and yeah, um, I don't know, just less uh, vulnerable to injury and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I think um, when Jake Gibb and Sean Rosenthal were playing together, they hired Mike Dodd as their coach, mm-hmm. and Jake asked Mike, he's like, I can't what's wrong with you? I'm not hitting that hard. I'm not jumping that high. And Mike said, you're too light. Like, look at you. Like, where's your power supposed to come from? Right. And so he put like 15 pounds on Jake and then Jake found that like his kind of quote unquote fighting weight at like, I think 220. Look at all the older guys. Phil started hitting the gym hard yeah. at the end. Like he was more buff towards the end of when I played with him than the beginning for sure. I was like, yeah. wow, Phil came back. Jack, like this is a problem. <laughs> Nick is extremely jacked right yeah. now. Jake hits the gym super hard. Hayden ov- obviously always has. Even though it's funny because Hayden hits the gym super hard, but he actually has been losing weight over the years because he came into the gym 220. Hayden was 220 Hayden. coming out of indoor. And Mikel, Jeez. our trainer, was like, why do you need all this weight? And, and he was like 205 when I first played with him, and I was 190. By the time we stopped, I was 200. He was 190. <laughs> and he just kept cutting. I don't know. That's yeah. like for hiding because he, he's changing his style of play and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So that's my main thing. And two weeks at home with mama's home cooking, I put weight back on. Yeah. Back. Real quick. <laughs> Real quick. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bad weight, though. Yeah. No, that's the best <laughs> weight. Good food. I'm going to miss my home cooked meals every night. That's yeah, the really. tough part. Yeah. Um, well, this yeah. is your like kind of first off. Literally, I have no idea of. what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea hey. what I'm supposed to do, what I want to do. I'm just I wake up. I'm like, what am I gonna do today? I don't know. Yeah. Do I want to play volleyball? At this least week? you sure. don't act like you know what you're doing. The the no. number one way to like 
be open to learning is first admitting that you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Literally no <laughs> idea what I'm doing. I've had no idea all summer. I'm just kind of rolling with it. Yeah. I'm like, whatever, I'll figure it out. I don't know. I'm going to go to this. You do a good job winging it. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I, I know I need to be lifting more. I started lifting a little bit again, and, like, I, I think that's important for me. But when I was at school my fifth year, we had a new strength coach, and we really – were lifting heavy like we and Stein had us lifting he was all about like the long term like yeah. we want to be at our best in Gulf Shores and so we'd be I'd be max deadlifting the day before a game and I was like this is crazy I've never done this ever I've never yeah. really you know because but I was also used to I it was the craziest thing I would do indoor off season lifting with the indoor team while I was in beach season mm. so I was like dead I'm kind of used to lifting yeah. it but I just never I wasn't sure if that was what was best for me I always felt like if I I, I like to lean out a little bit because in indoor all we do is eat and travel and play and yeah. I feel like I was always bigger during indoor which is normal and then I'd lean out during the beach season and do a bunch of like assault bike stuff and cardio stuff which I really liked um but yeah all summer I just had a lack of resources and was like I'm just gonna play all the time and do a lot of cardio and like didn't lift that much and like I don't know. I, I, I do feel like I kind of lacked strength. I felt like I was quick. I felt like I was springy, but like not hitting as hard as normal mm. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and so that's something I think I need to get back into. And I'm kind of experimenting with the, with the playing thing. A lot of people who are my age in my level are still playing a bunch. So I'm like, yeah. I feel, I'm like, eh, if I'm not playing, I feel like that's, I'm not, yeah. You know, and I don't want to be pressured into doing things that I, I don't feel like I have to do because now's the time. I've never had an off season like ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's been kind of nice. I'm like, I'm going to go out to the bar and like go hang out with my friends. And like, <laughs> like, and that's been, it's been fun to just, you know, kind of experiment and see um, what I need to do. And I think, For like sure. you said, it's all, it's a work in progress, you know, and every year is going to be a bit different. And, yeah. but I do want to be ready come you know whenever the there's tournaments i don't know if i'm gonna be able to even go play in any fivb stuff but i want to be ready in case someone picks me up and wants me to play yeah um and so i think moving up here too especially is like giving me a lot of motivation to like you know, keep at it and yeah. I, I love playing i kind of go nuts when i'm not playing volleyball i'm like what am i doing with my life what am i supposed yeah. to do um so i think playing t twice a week is fine and you know i'd like to get into the gym a lot more um yeah we'll see i don't know no, i think that's good i think so, um just being like you said being ready yeah but like being ready doesn't mean you know two weeks you find out in two weeks that you're going somewhere it's like the work had to have already been done, been right? done. yeah so just think like a month or two in advance mm -hmm. like okay in case opportunities might pop up in january yeah. that i'm gonna want to be ready for so in november i'm gonna at least or it might not be january yeah. february whatever I'm going to think about that now mm -hmm. just in case those come up. And if yeah. they don't, then whatever, you're in shape. And that's why I, I did. I went to the Clearwater ABP next. I played in Laguna. I might go to Clearwater again at the end of the year. There's a some sort of ABP event out there, I think. I don't know if it's a next. Um, but that's – I like being in competition all the time because mm. I, I like – being under pressure and I, I don't like when that goes away because I, I know when I don't play for a while and then I go play in a tournament I'm like kind of freaking out I'm like mm. I, I'd, I'd rather be competing a lot and that's you know if like Turks and K goes I'm gonna go play for a whole week straight or yeah. coach or whatever I'm yeah. gonna do out there um get touches and just get touches in any way that I can yeah, yeah. But it's interesting it's yeah. a lot of experimenting I think that's kind of a part you know part of this whole process yeah. and I'm completely alone I don't have a coach I don't have anyone who's out there like mm -hmm. I don't have a set partner so I'm like it's completely self I have to be self-motivated but I do have a lot of people around me a lot of the younger men and women on the tour that are totally still grinding and yeah. like staying after it. and like I think we're just young and we're excited and um, we want to be ready so I think you know surrounding myself with people like that is good but also knowing there's a balance like it's it's probably good to take a week off of volleyball sometimes and just yeah. for the for the mental I think yeah. that's a big thing it's about, about customizing it for yourself mm -hmm. which is why I'm not like April, what do you do? I'm going to do exactly that. <laughs> yeah. Or you yeah. should do exactly what, like, it just won't work. Just you'll burn out work. or you, you'll feel like you need more reps. Mm -hmm. Like, you would probably feel like you need way more reps if you did what I do kind of thing. Yeah. Or you used to. 
Yeah. Now well, you're kind of getting it. <laughs> I'm getting there. It was actually, I loved practicing with Jose. Uh -huh. um, Cause on Mondays when we practice with him, he would like stop us. We'd have a good rep at like, we'd be there for like an hour 20. We'd have like a perfect line shot and he'd be like, we're done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And me and Tim would be like, no, 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 we want to do more. He's like, no. Yeah. He's like, you do more Jose's now the and tomorrow's practice is going to be worse. And yeah, Thursday's exactly. practice is going to be worse. Mm -hmm. He's like, we're stopping, we're building. Yeah. And I think I like need a coach who tells me to stop. Right. Cause you know, with love Adam to death, but he does not have a break. Uh -huh. Like he, he just guns it, pedal to the metal the whole time. And so we just like floored it for nine months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you so, got that many reps. <laughs> and it was awesome. And I got yeah. all those reps. And so now I do think that like, I, I look at reps sort of like a bank. Like I put those reps in the bank mm. now and I probably got I don't know, twice as many this year as I would have. But now you need to invest those and now, yeah. reps. They can't just Why, sit there. Where can I invest them? They can't <laughs> right. just sit in the bank. I have to invest them wisely. Right. And so right now I'm investing in rest because I have I didn't do that nearly enough this no. year. And it's like so nice to be able to walk up, like step up on a curb and my knee doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, that it's, it's, it's the little things. It's the little things. <laughs> or just oh sit on this God. couch. I'm like, oh, I sat down. I feel free. great. I feel it's great. amazing. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, all right, let's see. This is an interesting question. Someone, Jack Duffy, he's relatively new to the pod and would love to hear how Travis got his start in the sand. Um, I feel like so, we've talked about this. Yes, yeah, so I've right. answered this a few times. So for yeah. Jack, if you want to hear, I think probably the best podcast for you to listen to or anybody who's interested in, in how a Marylander gets into beach volleyball. Um, when I wrote my first book, We Were Kings, we did a podcast, me and Try, where we basically just chatted about my story. I think we did that. That was like 2018. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the best place to do that. Definitely. But yeah, if uh, I just moved to a place that had beach volleyball, stumbled into it, and, and got obsessed. Is sort of the he, he's a sports version. writer. Yeah, traveling around trying to figure out what to do as a sports writer, and found volleyball, fell in love with it. And was like, I can actually play too. Yeah. so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna do that. Um, historically athletic person naturally so just got into it can they listen to it on apple too or, yeah, or so podbean? it would be probably easier on podbean or if you just google it um because right. apple i don't know what the threshold is where you can only go How back far right. can you go, yeah. a certain amount um, that's kind of weird yeah that's with every podcast oh. that i've listened to though so uh, i would just google it or go to podbean um, if you just Google Sandcast Podbean, you can pull up any episode we've ever done. Um, there which, you go. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Um, advice for self-taught beach volleyball kids with no connections and never played indoor before. Um, I mean, the biggest thing would just be if you move somewhere where beach volleyball is a thing and you just plug yourself into the community mm -hmm. and you just make friendships in that community, it, it's in, inevitable yeah. that you'll get better. But the, a lot of people don't have that personality, right? Where they can just walk up and like, yeah. like I would literally say if it's my kid, let's say, or my nephew or some cousin, I'd be like, just come to practice. Exactly. Like our practices are open. Just yeah. come sit here, shag balls, listen watch. to what Jose is saying, listen to what we're doing, and then go practice after, mm -hmm. you know? and like try to emulate it or simulate it and then go get reps on your own. You hear what we're saying, we work out, we lift hard, go do that. Obviously you have to have a job and you know, you just do it to whatever capacity you can, but mm -hmm. write down all the things that we're saying here. Listen to the Gervais podcast. I had him tell me exactly <laughs> the people I would have surround myself with. Not everybody has the resources, we acknowledge that, but whatever you can do, you plug those things into your system based on how much time you have and you go for it and see how good you're going to be and then make a decision whether or not it's realistic for you. But I mean, yeah, you're, you're behind by not having volleyball reps mm -hmm. it's in this day and age. If, if you're a girl, you didn't get to play college ball. You're behind mm -hmm. men. Uh, historically for men, if you didn't play college indoor, you're behind, um, you know, Sean Rosenthal's like, one of the only ones that, well, I guess there's a lot of Jake. Jake, I didn't really Phil, Nick, play Jake. Indoor. Yeah. Phil, Nick, and Jake. Yeah. So and Rosie. Yeah. Those a lot of our Olympians. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for me, I, I feel like my confidence came from yeah playing growing up, and I I would have been good either way. Yeah. But having gone to college and played at a high level, 
played under the big pressures of Final Fours and that kind of stuff, um, that helped me tremendously. So yeah. you have to like really be willing to put yourself in uncomfortable situations um, so you can get used to it and get comfortable in it. Yeah, and I think there's so many things you can do on your own. We've mm -hmm. talked about it a lot, but you mentioned it, that you'll start going out with a ball and just calibrating. Yeah, right. And 100%. so, and and what do you mean by by calibrating exactly for people who might not be um, familiar? Yeah, I that's what I call it. Um, it's just about getting like technical reps. Like if I was a if you're a basketball player, you're like standing two feet from the rim, you shoot it, mm -hmm. step a foot back, shoot it, step a foot back. You know, you're making making everything perfect, um, and starting from like the really minute details. Um, and it usually should be the foundation. You're building your foundation, so passing. For me, I don't like, even at this level, I don't like starting practice where I'm taking a big step to pass or anything. I literally want the ball to come right at me and just get the feeling on my platform. Okay, my platform's in the right spot. Now I'll step half a step right, half a mm -hmm. step left, and then I just move it out from there. Um, so when I do calibration practices, it's like that, or like arm swing where I'm standing and serving mm -hmm. balls Trying to hit targets, yes, but also just making sure my arm's going in the right track, getting the right contact. It's all that small stuff. Yeah, and you can do, I mean, calibrations against a wall. Like you can That's how I started a wall forever. When I was out with my autoimmune stuff, I was setting into a basketball hoop, which is a great, like I didn't realize how hard it was. Yeah. How, I didn't realize how inaccurate we actually are as setters. <laughs> Like we do not like it's really <laughs> hard to set into a basketball hoop, um, but that was great reps for me. And then I was hitting against the wall, uh, different angles, right? So my hand coming down to like my right pocket, kind of uh, down to my left pocket, you know, different contact areas, making sure it's high, I'm making sure I'm getting that pop off the ball mm -hmm. on my hand, stuff like that. Yeah. So like if say you're new to a community or you just don't want to like reach out because you're maybe you're self conscious about your maybe lack of skill set a wall is your best friend or a mm -hmm. basketball hoop because you can pass against the wall you can set against the wall you can poke against the wall i used to uh when i lived when i first moved to california i didn't know anyone i would warm up before i went to the gym at 24 fitness on the basketball court and i'll do like 100 right-handed pokes against it 100 left-handed pokes like handset like throw a bunch of spin on it handset try to handset into the hoop yeah <laughs> it's hard Super um hard. and then you can serve it against the wall and then pat like get in serve receive there's so many things you can yep. do by yourself so creative to get that skill set and you can get like a thousand reps in 25 minutes if mm -hmm. you just like hammer it out and then you go lift and and you're good and you're going to get infinitely better pretty fast yeah. and and the guy you want to listen to is travis like he's you <laughs> basically <laughs> so you're welcome just listen <laughs> he had no reps and he just listened to the podcast. He's literally on the podcast <laughs> and listened to every player and advice and actually went out and applied it. And now he's what? Top, probably higher than top 10 blocker in the US now. Oh, I was so close to the stipend. Oh, you're not? Oh, wait. Well, oh, probably stipend. top 10 internationally. Yeah. International but, USA. Yeah. Right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. So let's finish, finish up with some. Lifestyle random ones? Sure. Yeah. Throw them out there. Okay. Let's see. Favorite flavor of Monster Hydro. Ooh. Good sponsor plug. I've been going with mm -hmm. uh, Killer Kiwi. But the last few days, I forget what the orange one, Manic Orange or some, something like that. That one's been doing it for me. Mm -hmm. But I like the Kiwi. The whatever purple. I don't purple know. Purple one's good. Yeah. Maybe it's grape. I don't know. Right. But... I just go by purple, purple. <laughs> whatever color I've never had a, I've, I've tried the Monster Hydro but I was with the Van Winkles in Hawaii and they bought it was like the pink can I don't know oh, yeah. what the flavor was but it was good <laughs> threw it in the mixed good. drink it was delicious it was a good night the, it was a good night the funniest <laughs> night. Monster Hydro experience I've ever had was when I was in I was playing in Hermosa two two or three years ago I keep forgetting with COVID like I just sort of washed 2020 mm, right 2019 <laughs> Um, and I was playing Kurt Topol and Raffi, and it was a clear monster. And Kurt thought it was oh, water. Yeah. Chug two of them. He These things have like they have like four hundred milligrams yeah. of caffeine. <laughs> and so he's like having Raffi like run to the net because Kurt's like having a heart attack. <laughs> during our match. 
Yeah, no, you don't And he goes back and he's like, they have caffeine in them? I'm like, well, it's a, it's a monster, it's Kurt. It's a monster. <laughs> yeah. oh. It's kind of the product. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Kurt likes the clear ones. <laughs> I've yeah. never even seen those. That's so funny. Um, let's see. Favorite players to watch of all time. Ooh, I was actually talking to someone today about um, a player I loved watching because I've I've always been so blocking oriented, uh, which is Sean Scott, like underrated player. Very. He kind of, it just his demeanor. I think like he didn't get as much credit as I think he deserved. And I think because uh, he never played international. That right too, and like now that he's on the USA. He's like our beach director or whatever. Like he doesn't have anything to do. He like d- takes himself out of volleyball a little bit, but we all forget like how good he was. Yeah. I think if you ask any of the top players over the last two decades, they might say that he was pound for pound, like top three blocker. Which I mean is like if you're the same, if everyone's the same size, the same reach, everything, who's the best blocker is, might be Sean with yeah. his ab- ability to move his hands at the net. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he was a freak. He could jump so high. I feel like that's why Haydn was like, oh, jumped, I, have a, I have a mini Sean well. with you. Yeah. Not even mini Sean, it's the next Sean. Yeah. Well, what about Rosie? <laughs> yeah. I feel like he's still playing, and we kind of forget about how much of a freak <laughs> Rosie was. Or still is. He still, still does is. crazy yeah. stuff. He's just dealing with a lot of uh, injuries and stuff. But, dude, that guy, go watch fo- footage of him back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's Ridiculous. crazy. Yeah. Freak. The guy I probably watched the most, it used to be Piotr Kantor um, of Poland, but he's so hurt now where it, like, it is painful to watch him play. <laughs> um, but my favorite is Giannis Medins, always. Huh. Giannis and Try. You're probably, I've oh, probably watched like no. between you, you no. two and Kantor. <laughs> I've watched like pretty much every match. Dude, he brings gas. That Who? Lefty gas. Smedins? Yeah, yeah. Smedins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's fun to watch. A really good player. Yeah. And he's only like six three, blocker and one of the best players on the world tour over the past decade. And I'm like, all right, well if he can do it, I can try. <laughs> yeah. I would say mine definitely just as a defender watching Misty May was the best, and uh-huh. I think watching April too is so like she just makes everything look so easy and yeah. so simple, and I know it's just not that simple, and she's she works so hard and so. Yeah. And I also just love her because, like. For example, at the AVP banquet, she like she hung out with us the entire time, yeah. and like she follows me on Instagram and responds to everyone's stories. Like I just think that's it's yeah. so cool to be, you know, of her caliber and be doing stuff like that. Um, and then honestly, watching Taylor Crab, I think for me yeah. Again, yeah, as a defender, true. he's just so fun to watch. There's yeah. so many people, but I think those are my top three. Yeah, Taylor's just watch. so relaxed and everything yeah. he does, just like digging off his shoulder yeah. or whatever. Um, Taylor's pretty pretty damn fun to watch yeah. for sure but i'll say april too with a lot of stuff it's almost like the lebron factor where mm-hmm. you're like oh it's just a layup you know yeah. like where he does something you don't realize how difficult exactly. or like how fast he was moving but because he just like it's just so easy for him yeah april's kind of like that you're like oh, okay she got the dig or she got the kill or whatever like yeah no like people aren't bringing heat like that no. people aren't getting to balls like that and she's doing great read i was yeah. literally on the training table with her uh two hours ago picking her brain about defense <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. and i was and she really helped me um just like perspective and like what she's looking for in terms of like read first or like running her play first and stuff like that so i'm like i fully respect her in mm-hmm. terms of actually in every single if i had to emulate my game after anyone it'd be her not mm-hmm. like a guy mm-hmm. for sure yeah I think that's the hallmark of a great athlete is how easy they make it look. Yeah. If you watch the best, I think golf is it's like the signature of that, where you, if you watch the best golfers, you're like, this is the easiest sport in the world. Yeah, right. You know, and then you go to play, and you're like, how did I get that ball to move in the right direction? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like Taylor, he said he just makes it look so easy. And Taylor makes and it April's look easy, simple. but he makes it look like flashy too somehow. Like he's flying all. Mm-hmm. April's not like flying everywhere, digging crazy, yeah. yet she's getting the job done. Yeah. You know, it's like, obviously different but yeah it, it's it's the small things that she does I mm-hmm. think that separates absolutely her. Uh, let's see favorite flavor of ice cream mint chip that was easy uh, moose tracks solid solid 
I go with Ben and Jerry's half baked. Oh, oh good cookie yes. dough. Yeah, yeah. That's cookie dough's up there on my list. I that's still like a good cherries Garcia. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. I just solid. anything with peanut butter or cookie dough. I'm just like, yep, you've stolen my heart. <laughs> <laughs> That was easy. <laughs> took shakes from Outrigger. They got me. <laughs> I'm just obsessed with like Oreo and chocolate. And like that's when I was doing my stupid diet. Oh. All I wanted was like an Oreo. Like it's literally an stupid Oreo shake diet. or like a chocolate chip cookie. I was like, I would literally die for a chocolate chip cookie. Right Any now. hope we had to be sponsored by Whole30 is out. Out. It's, yeah. it's out. But I love an Oreo sponsorship or a Ben and Jerry's be gladly. Epic. How stoked would you be? To gladly. An Oreo. Oreo's hat. Oh, any any day. I love. Did Oreos. you see uh, Giannis's yeah, press conference? Yeah. That was he just started awesome. talking about dunking Oreos in milk. Like, does any does everybody know about this? <laughs> I saw that. It's it was good. amazing. Yeah. Oh man. All right, shall we wa- wrap it up? I have one more, one good one to end on. Let's what do, do you it. think? Perfect. Okay. Do you guys know Beto? Do you know who that is? No. He, I don't know how to say his last name, but he Beto. is a big UCLA fan. Okay. Comes to all of our games, and he's out here all the time. So he, probably, he's asking probably questions. Know. You, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, he Beto. said, what's a better dinner, smoked tri-tip or buttered king crab legs? <laughs> I'm going to try not to be biased because <laughs> I know what you're doing. Uh, <sighs> I'm not biased either. I love tri-tip. I'm That's definitely a beef yeah. guy. Yeah. Like, Tri tips hit or miss for me though. I'll be really? honest. I came to the mainland and like all these Cali people like hyped the crap out of tri tip. Like okay, yeah. tri tip. Like that's the thing out here. Is and that I'm like, a California eh, thing? It's good. I've never seen tri tip anywhere, but I think California. it's a Cali thing. Okay. Yeah. I think it's the same cut. They just call it something call it different. different. I love yeah. tri tip, but <laughs> we okay. If we we need to do like a, a little barbecue thing with this in the studio and, yes, and hang out. Right outside. There's this place in San Diego called it's car, called Cart. You know where Cardiff is? Have you been yeah. to San Diego? There, it's called Seaside Markets. The place. It's like a small little grocery store, and they have this tri tip called Cardiff Crack, Whoa. and they call it Crack because it's so good, and it's it's just like a pre season piece of meat, and we just wrap it up. Either th- you either put it in the oven, put it on the grill, however you want to cook yeah. it. It's so good. So oh, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a try. When are we getting one? Anytime. <laughs> Let's go. Anytime. I'll bring we'll, one up. We'll do a Q&A followed by a barbecue. Absolutely. Or with barbecue, eat, and then do the Q&A so we can say the answer. Perfect. Yeah. Well, crab legs like are good. You're, the, you're from Maryland, so let's hear your answer. Well, we're we're blue crab. Ooh. Um, and so king crab is a little bit different. King crab legs are, are pretty good, but I'm a blue crab guy. So mm. in this debate, Tri-tip versus king crab. It's tri-tip, no question. Because mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for tri-tip. Mm-hmm. And I like crab. I just, we don't eat crab that much in Hawaii, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. So I'm not, like, the best guy to ask. Yeah. And cr- eating crabs, it's more of a, like, a social activity. Because mm. you're, you're picking the crabs. Everyone's got, like, some beers. But I like when it's cut in half and I can just peel it out and dip <laughs> it in some butter. <laughs> yeah. So blue crabs, you can't. You can't do that. Yeah, so you're it, working. It's not. Yeah, you're, you're working, working the whole time. Your and you're talking like little pieces of meat. Yeah, the like king crab. Like I'll be you stoked to do it at your chunk. house, like fully engaged. Yeah, but I'm. I'll definitely be annoyed. <laughs> like, <laughs> God damn it! I'm so hungry. Yeah. Where's the other app? I need a side app. So know, we so I yep, can stay. Exactly. like grill burgers and stuff oh, there we to go. have as like a meal. Like this Perfect. is just sort of like the social activity. Okay, gotcha. It, it's sort of like the hors d'oeuvres and drinks, gotcha, and then you get you get the real meal to fill you up. Okay, perfect. I'm in. Yeah. Mm. But also try to, I came up here and now I got the Brazilian team and they cook up the picanha. Oh, the picanha. Mm. And that's like game over. So Especially good. with yeah. Landro on like the grill. Oh. Any of them, it's game over. Like try tips, sorry. You're out. You're out. Yeah. out. Yeah. And that's another reason that I love Brazil. Their Brazilian steak is oh, yeah. just, it's Insane. next level. Yeah. 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 So there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Answering the important stuff. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Seth, we got to get you to a Clippers game. Go oh, to the yeah. Clippers game. Go to the Clippers. I'm not game. really a fan. Clippers, Pelicans. I'm just going. I got invited. It's just so hey, fun to see sports yeah. live. I yeah, love exactly. sports. Yeah. I'm ready to go. It's in the Crip Clippers. Center, a c- crypto.com center. <laughs> 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 Make sure you wear blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. I've said that to multiple people. I'm going to the Stable Center. They're like, it's not called that anymore. Yeah, I'm right. Like, okay. Like crypto.com. Crypto.com. Arena. Arena. Change them. Yeah. yeah. Did you look it up? Are we confirmed that it was is called? Crypto.com okay. Arena. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm out. All right, guys. Sweet. Good to have you back. Good to be back, Good as always. Time. Team. Booyah. Love it. Good stuff. Shoots. Later. Shoots. <laughs>